This is ex-Beverly Police Officer Courtney Brennan. It is the full Internal Affairs Investigation Report. This report discloses that she was drinking and drugging on the job. She was intoxicated while driving and having her service weapon on her. She admits to being drunk and or intoxicated while on duty at least five times. She admits to drinking vodka straight out of the bottle during her lunch and or dinner break. This all started from a viewer sending me an email anonymously with the picture of Courtney Brennan posing as a Once I received this email, I then took that picture and emailed Courtney Brennan through her police email and asked her for comment because I did not know if this was real or not. Well, the picture was absolutely real and I put in a public records request for any internal affairs investigation report back on February 16th, as you see here. I got a response from the chief himself on February 24th, as you see here. This email was simply stating that they had received my request, and this was eight days later. I reached out again on March 16th, 2022, informing them that they were well past the 10 business days that they had to respond or give an excuse of why they cannot fulfill this request within the 10 days. The chief's response in that same day was he believed the city solicitor had sent me an email explaining the period of appeal had not yet run. Therefore, the MGL it is still considered under investigation. Again, let me remind you, this is March 16th when I put in my original request on February 16th and their original response was on February 24th. But as we see on the internal affairs report, their investigation was finished February 18th, two days after my initial request. And look who signed it, the chief, the one that said it was still under investigation on March 16th. But this doesn't surprise me coming from the chief that favorably hired friends and family of other police officers ahead of actual real good candidates that would be good police officers. As you see here, one friend or family member was picked over a Cambridge firefighter. This person had multiple license suspensions and even a fight in high school that made the victim have two surgeries. Another incident that happened that is worth mentioning because the officer is still with that police department is the officer involved shooting that happened because of the alleged affair between a Beverly police officer and a Hamilton police sergeant's wife. The police sergeant from Hamilton met up with the Beverly police officer and shot him in the groin area and then returned to the parking lot later on and himself. As this internal affairs investigation states, this behavior was over a two year period. And if they didn't know about this behavior over two years, you have to question their training in noticing people under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. She didn't have glossy eyes. She didn't have bloodshot eyes, never slurred speech. She admitted to drinking vodka straight from the bottle during her lunch and dinner breaks. And if they did know about these things, about very dangerous criminal behavior, not just for the officers, but for the public that they say they are there to protect. This department completely failed the public. And the only reason why any of this came forward is because they got that picture that I sent them in the email and they had to address that. Therefore, they investigated all of the rest of her behaviors and used that to fire her. Before I get into the actual internal affairs investigation report, I'm going to show you this video that I found on YouTube of Beverly police officers getting into it with each other. And this is what happens when they think nobody is watching. Get the f away from me! Get away from me! Get away from me! Get away from me! Don't, don't come near me! Get away from me! 
Get, listen to me. Get away from me. All contact information to the district attorney's office, the police department, and the city solicitor will be in the description, along with any other links to any videos. Google Drive link will also be in the description with the full internal affairs investigation report. If you would like to support by donating, links will also be in the description to my PayPal and Cash App. That will help with my investigatory reporting and journalism. I appreciate all the support. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell here on my main channel and my backup channel. Now let's get into the IA report. City of Beverly Police Department, 175 Elliott Street, Beverly, Massachusetts, 01915. February 18th, 2022. Pursuant to the authority vested in me as the appointing authority under the provisions of Massachusetts general laws, you are hereby notified that you are terminated from your employment as a police officer with the Beverly Police Department, effective immediately. Said action is just cause, namely. Violations. Number one. Rules and Regulations, Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. The specific sentences from the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics that are relevant to this investigation are the following. I will keep my private life unsealed as an example to all, honest in thought and deed in both my personal and official life. I will be exemplary in obeying the laws of the land and regulations of my department. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith and I accept it as a public trust to be held so long as I am true to the ethics of the police service. I will consistently strive to achieve these objectives and ideals based upon Officer Brennan's actions, including posing in a salute, redaction, and multiple violations of department rules and regulations, including drinking on duty, intoxicated when reporting for duty, and violating the general order issued prohibiting the use of marijuana. Officer Brennan is found to have violated the above part of Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. These violations are sustained. Number two, Rules and Regulations, Section C, Professional Responsibilities. The specific part of this section relevant to the investigation is the following. Police officers are professionals and as such are expected to maintain exceptionally high standards in the performance of their duties, effective and Efficient performance of their duties requires that police officers maintain the respect and cooperation of their community. This requirement dictates that the conduct of all police officers be above reproach in all matters both within and outside the department. Officer Brennan's conduct was not above reproach outside of the department when posing in a salute regardless of whether she was intoxicated, intended to be photographed, or was just joking. The end result is that she did in fact pose in that manner and was photographed. At the minimum, the photo was taken when she was a reserve police officer. She was still subject to departmental rules and regulations while employed as a reserve police officer. It was not inconceivable to believe that it would be hard for an officer Brennan to maintain the respect of the community if the public viewed the photo. Regardless of the intent behind the pose, Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of the section. The violation is sustained. Number three, rules and regulations, section E, orders. The specific part of this section relevant to the investigation is the following. An order is a command or instruction written or oral given by a superior officer. All lawful orders written or oral shall be carried out fully and in the manner prescribed. Failure to deliberate, refusal of any member to obey a lawful order given by the superior officer shall be in subordination. Officer Brennan was instructed in writing to appear for an interview at a specific date and time. Officer Brennan was advised that the scheduled date and time could not be changed unless approved by me or chief at least 24 hours in advance. Instead of requesting a change in the date and time outside of 24 hours, Officer Brennan sent me an email less than 24 hours in advance of the date and time stating she would not be appearing at the scheduled date and time. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this section. 
the violation is sustained. Number four, rules, regulations, section F, required conduct, paragraph six, truthfulness. An officer shall truly state the facts in all reports as well as when they appear before any judicial, departmental, or other investigation, hearing, trial, or proceeding. They shall cooperate fully in all phases of such investigations, hearings, trials, and proceedings. Officer Brennan, in the second interview, was asked three times if her redaction. All three times she stated yes. I clarified in one question that redaction and Officer Brennan stated yes. In the third interview, when asked who she redaction from in the academy, Officer Brennan stated she was only redaction during the academy. I have already received anonymous tips on who might be possibly part of those redactions, and it is a fellow female officer, Nicole Benkel. Officer Brennan then recounted her response to a traumatic suicide call as an event that precipitated redaction. This was never mentioned in the second interview. In the second interview, Officer Brennan was asked at what point she felt the redaction for her and she stated in the academy. She explained that she was redaction and the instructors were really hard on her in the academy. She further explained that she felt she was treated more harshly than anyone else and was discriminated against. This was never mentioned in the third interview. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this section. The violation is sustained. Number five, rules and regulations, section G, prohibited conduct, paragraph one, criminal conduct. This segment states, commission of any felony or misdemeanor. Of course, guys, the most redactions is under the commission of any felony and misdemeanor section, criminal conduct section. This is the part where we really need to use our First Amendment right to redress our grievances with government officials. We need this unredacted. Use the contact information in the comment section and pinned comment down below. It says, the conduct was ongoing for approximately two years. Officer Brennan admitted to drinking alcohol while on duty multiple times, but not more than five. Officer Brennan also admitted that she had alcohol within two hours of her shift on at least two occasions. Carrying a loaded firearm while under the influence of liquor is a misdemeanor. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this section. These violations are sustained. Number six, rules and regulations, section G, prohibited conduct, paragraph two, conduct unbecoming of an officer. This segment states, any specific type of conduct which reflects discredit upon the member as a police officer or upon their fellow officers or upon the department they serve. Officer Brennan engaged in multiple types of conduct that would bring discredit upon herself, her fellow officers, and her department. That conduct being posing in a Hitler salute, the criminal behavior of redaction, carrying a loaded firearm while under the influence, drinking while on duty, and drinking prior to the start of her shift. All of these acts, either taken as a whole or individually, when reviewed from the outside looking in, do harm not only to Officer Brennan, but also her fellow officers and department. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this section. These violations are sustained. Number seven, rules and regulations, section G, prohibited conduct, paragraph eight, intoxication. This segment states intoxication when reporting for duty or while on duty through the use of liquor, controlled substances, drugs, or any other means. Officer Brennan admitted to drinking on duty on at least five separate occasions. Officer Brennan also stated that she drank within two hours of her shift on at least two occasions. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this section. The violation is sustained. Number eight, rules and regulations, section G, prohibited conduct, paragraph nine, drinking on duty. This segment states, the consumption of alcohol while on duty unless authorized by proper police authorities. Officer Brennan admitted to drinking alcohol during her shift and or lunch break while working. 
She estimated this took place on multiple occasions, but not more than five. Officer Brennan stated she would drink from a bottle of vodka. Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of the section. Violation is sustained. Number nine, rules and regulations, section G, prohibited conduct, paragraph nine, improper associations. This segment states, voluntary maintaining or establishing relationships with persons engaged in unlawful activity except in the discharge of official duty and without prior knowledge of the member's commanding officer or the chief of police. At some point, redaction offered to either give or sell a controlled substance to Officer Brennan. Selling or even just giving someone a controlled substance is an unlawful activity. Being a police officer, upon being offered the controlled substance, which is criminal behavior, Officer Brennan should have ended all contact with Redaction at that moment. Officer Brennan continued to associate with Redaction and described going to parties with her and having friends givings. Officer Brennan stated she was given a save the date card for Redaction wedding. Officer Brennan also had an indirect relationship with Redaction she may have, she may not have been as close or friendly with her as she was with Redaction, but enough of a relationship was present for Redaction to trust Big Redaction. Officer Brennan is found in violation of the section. The violation is sustained. Number 10, General Order G-2016-2016. 003 marijuana use and possession the specific parts of this order relevant to this investigation i chief want to take this opportunity to remind all employees that this department has a rule prohibiting criminal misconduct and that includes the use and possession of marijuana regardless of what massachusetts voters have done to legalize the use and possession of certain amounts of marijuana for recreational or medicinal purposes. Marijuana remains a Schedule I controlled substance under the Federal Controlled Substance Act 21 U.S.C. 812-B1, whose sale, use, and possession are federal crimes. State laws allowing marijuana use do not protect department members against employment-related sanctions. 18 U.S.C. 922 G3 prohibits an unlawful user of a controlled substance as defined by the Federal Controlled Substances Act from possessing any firearms or ammunition. In summary, all department personnel are still prohibited from using or possessing marijuana regardless of the laws with respect to marijuana possession and usage in Massachusetts. Officer Brennan admitted that she had smoked marijuana as a Beverly police officer. When asked if she knew smoking marijuana was prohibited, she stated, I'm sure I knew that, but at the time I was fucked up. She could not recall how often or how many times she used it, but stated that it was not an every week thing. Regardless of how often she used it or how many times, she is still prohibited from the use of marijuana. Per General Order G-2016-003, Officer Brennan is found to be in violation of this order. Violation is sustained. Sustained charges. Therefore, I find there is just cause to sustain the specific charges against Officer Courtney Brennan for the following violations of the rules and regulations of the Beverly Police Department. Conduct unbecoming of an officer, one count, as outlined in Code of Ethics. Criminal conduct, as outlined in Section G, Part 1, completely redacted, one count. Professional Responsibility, Section C, one count. Orders, Section E, one count. Truthfulness, Section F, Paragraph 6, one count. General Orders, G-2016-003, one count. Prohibited Conduct, Section G, four counts. Disciplinary Action. 
as a result of the conduct complained of and the resulting 10 violations of the Beverly Police Department rules and regulations see above, there appears to be a deeply concerning pattern of, of behavior displayed by you, including but not limited to criminal conduct and drinking on duty, whereby the type of misconduct exhibited as outlined above, both in office and off duty, can be said to reasonably render you unable to continue to serve in the capacity in the public trust as a duly sworn Beverly police officer. Your conduct has fallen well below the standard expected of city employees, particularly public safety employees. Your actions constitute substantial and egregious misconduct, which adversely affects the public interest and safety by impairing the efficiency of public service. Based on the substantial Based on the sustained charges, I find that there is a cause for your discharge. Therefore, as the appointing authority of the Beverly Police Department, I am terminating your employment as a duly sworn Beverly Police Officer. Your actions have caused the loss of public's trust. Please find enclosed copies of MGL Chapters 31, Sections 41 through 45, which outline statutory procedural protections that you are also entitled to. Per Massachusetts general law, this finding will also be forwarded to the post commission. Per MGL chapter 6E section 4, officers must be of good moral character. The commission may pending preliminary inquiry pursuant of paragraph 1 of subsection C of section 8, suspend the certification of any officer if the commission determines by preponderance of the evidence that the suspension is in the best interest of the health, safety, or welfare of the public. Further, you are hereby ordered to turn in all keys, identification cards, and or badges, and all city property in your possession immediately to Captain Russo, Operation Commander, if still in your possession. Per order of Chief of Police, I'd like to remind everyone, this is what can happen if you have any information on any police officer, whether it's pictures, video, audio, documentation, it's very important. If you can send it to me at mass, M-A-S-S-A, -S -S network, N-E-T-W-O-R-K, 44, at gmail.com. Don't forget to also use all the contact information in the description and in the pinned comment. Also, all the links to all my social media platforms are linked in the description and the pinned comment. If you appreciate this content, the time, effort, and money spent giving you this content and want to help donate to the cause, the links to my PayPal and Cash App will also be in the description and pinned comment. I appreciate you all. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. On the way to 100k.